Have you gotten any sleep? Three hours. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> Chris, walk us through what the last 24 hours has been like for you. Oh, I mean, time of my life, really. I mean, I can't really put into words how good of a feeling this is to work for this your your whole life and, um, you know, finally get that chance. But I think the journey is just starting. This isn't um, where I want to end. You know, I want to win a lot of games and, you know, win uh, for the Cubs. And, you know, I think this is a good starting point. How do you feel about that? How bad were the coach tells me? But the cleanup's pretty cool. Any thoughts on facing James Shields here on the first time? Oh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um, first game against a really good pitcher. Um, yeah, I didn't get the chance to face him in spring training, but you know, I got the chance to face some really good guys. And um, you know, I really take the approach up there and not really worry about who's pitching. Um, it's kind of a nameless, faceless opponent. Um, I've been doing that my whole life, you know, so uh, I'll take that same approach today. <laughs> Chris, you, you said maybe around the draft you were able to start to block out the noise and, and you've been able to do that and yet perform. What, what's the key to doing that? Just uh, for me, it's kind of realizing why I play this game and um, it's not because of the money or any of the fame, it's because it's fun and it's because it's a dream of mine, it's what I've wanted to do my whole life. And, um, I think when you have the right perspective in, in this game and in life, then things usually turn out the way you want it to. And that's the, the way I've been playing my whole career, and I, I think that's the way I'll continue to play. Chris, yeah, Iowa season started. Uh, how were you able to keep focused, and were you aware of all the injuries that were going on up here? No, I, I wasn't aware of any, any injuries, actually. I you know, talked to a lot of you guys. I tried, really tried to avoid reading things, reading good or bad things. So. Um, you know, I, I wasn't really paying attention to that. I was kind of going out there every day working on what I needed to work on and getting better and um, having fun at the same time. But um, yeah. Iowa was good. I had some good teammates down there. But, you know, like I said, this is a game of mine. And it's where I'd love to be. Describe what it's like out giving the uh, good luck to your parents. Oh, man, that was uh, a day I was looking forward to. Um, I called my mom first, actually, because my dad was doing eating lessons. So, um, <laughs> You know, but she was more shocked. Um, we really didn't know when it would happen, but um, you know, I'm sure when they got the time to reflect on it, you know, there were probably tears of joy. I know my dad was crying. I've never seen my dad cry before. So, um, you know, something that we've been working for my whole life, in 17 years, and um, the day is here, and I'm really just trying to enjoy the moment. Whether it's a good game, bad game, whatever happens out there, I'm really here. Enjoy this day and um, you know have to share it with my family. Chris, could you hear? Could you use the word disappointed when you didn't make the roster right off the bat? Is that just all dissipated now that you're here? Yeah. The past? I uh, don't think about the past at all. I'm here now and um, yeah, I'm ready to play some ball. Hey, you said your dad crying. Could you hear him on the phone crying, or did somebody tell you he was crying? On the phone. Yeah, I uh, talk to my dad a lot, so I kind of know his tone of voice. <laughs> Was a little different this time. Was it freaky on your no. end of the phone? No, no, no. You said freaky. No. Yeah, to hear you, to hear you <laughs> dad cry. It was, freaky. it was different. It was different. I'd, uh, but um, I wouldn't have had it any other way. What does it mean to have your, your family here, your dad here, everybody here, and watch you make this debut at Wrigley? That's the, that's what it's all about, really. I mean, it's the coolest thing ever. I mean, I grew up going to big league games and wanting to be there in that position, and you know, now my family and parents girlfriend get to watch me on this big stage in Wrigley Field for the Chicago Cubs. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. It's only been a couple weeks <coughs> since seeing these team, your teammates, so kind of easy to walk in there and what was yeah. that like? Yeah, I mean, I've been keeping in touch with some of them over the last few weeks, so, and I mean, I can't say enough about them. They uh, open their arms and give me great advice and believe in me and, you know, want me here. And, you know, as a young guy that's trying to make his way through this game, that's all you could really want from your teammates and I mean they've been the greatest teammates I could ever ask. Busting your chops at all yet or no? No busting chops yet but I'm sure I'll get enough of that. Chris, yeah. did, your, uh, did your, uh, your dad said that the uh, only disappointment you guys have is that Ernie Banks isn't here to see you. Uh, what was that, uh, those meetings like that you had? I know you had, you had to meet him once. And, and, uh, this is a perfect day for, for you yeah. the sunshine out. Yeah, a perfect day. I mean, I thought they're sweating today, which, I mean, I guess we don't get that much here. But, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think I met Ernie once, and just 
talking to them, then it's, you don't really realize who you're talking to, and then you start to hear stories about um, not just the player he was, but the person he was. And you know, I try to be just as good as a person as I am a player, um, even a better person. I think that's more important. And you know, to, to come in the footsteps of a guy like that, I mean, um, it's a huge honor to wear this uniform, knowing that he wore it before me and plenty of other guys before him. So. Yeah, I'm ready to put it on and make him proud. How many Chris, Padres games were you able to watch when you were out in San Diego? Yeah, what about the coincidence of playing against him here? I went to quite a few Padre games, and um, yeah, San Diego is a great city for me. Obviously, it's a special place in my heart. If it wasn't for San Diego, I wouldn't be here. So it is kind of coming full circle. Um, but yeah, I was able to watch a lot of the Padres games. Yeah, what about the coincidence of playing against him here? Yeah, it's a great city. You know, I think that's something that I'll realize a couple weeks from now how special that is. And, um, you know, but right now, I'm, it's a little uh, overwhelming, uh, but you know, I'm ready to have fun with it. Chris, your dad was saying how you have, you're kind of fulfilling his dreams and everyone in your family. Is it too much pressure to carry the dreams of so many Cup fans to you? No, there's no pressure in this game. I mean, you let pressure creep in, you're not having fun. And like I said, I play this game because it's fun. Um, you know, I, who knows what the future holds for me. Um, I just know that I'm going to go out there and play as hard as I can and work to get better every day. And, um, you know, I've been doing that my whole life and things have turned out the way I wanted to in this game. So, um, you know, but when you start putting expectations that are kind of way out there, you kind of lose sight of, you know, what's really important in this game. And um, I think I'm well grounded enough to realize what I need to do and, um, you know, let's go play hard. That's what Joe told me today. He said, you know, forget about expectations. All I want you to do is go, go out there, show up on time, play hard, and uh, that's all I can ask for you. What was Scott Boris's reaction when you found out? <laughs> oh, he was ecstatic. Um, I think he's had a lot of players give him that call before, um, and he was extremely happy for me. Um, really good guy. I love talking to him. Knows a lot about baseball, and um, you know, guys on my side. Is he here today? Yes, he'll be here. You were in the middle of it with Boris and Major League Baseball, and everyone seemed to have an opinion on what to do with you. Uh, did you laugh about that, or how did you deal with that? Yeah, I sure hope I can look back on this and laugh at it. Um, I don't know, 15 years from now, that'd be you know, a pretty good situation for myself. But like I said, it's all in the past. Um, and, you know, I did what I needed to do, and you know, I, 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 I took what happened to me, and I went down and played as hard as I can, and that's all I could really do. And, um, you know, I have fun with it, so I'm embracing every moment that I get in this game because I know that I'm not going to be playing this game forever, and um, having fun with it and smiling. When Marty called you into the office, what, did they tease you a little bit before the game? No, um, it's actually kind of funny. We were uh, talking about foul poles because the uh, the home run I hit yesterday, we didn't know if it was fair or foul because the foul poles are really small, so I was saying, you know, we get. It'd be cool if they made the apples a little taller. And just in the, in the middle of that conversation, he says, "Oh, and you're going to the bigs tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, but I think he has a track record of kind of catching guys off guard. And I mean, that's a pretty cool job when you're a Triple A manager. You get to tell people that their dreams are coming true. And you know, he was a great coach for me, and I love him to death. And um, you know, I really enjoy playing. You emotional too when you have the news? Oh yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe a couple of tears, but um, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you can imagine your dreams coming true all in one moment. And you get to tell your the people that are closest to you. Um, that's a pretty special feeling, and um, you know, I wish everybody could, could experience that. Chris, have you thought much at all about? Uh, now coming on to a situation here that's uh, building and wants to be serious and long-term about winning when all is said and done. Yeah, I mean, that's as a baseball player, that's what you want. You want to play for an organization that wants to win. And, um, everything seems to be pointing in the right direction, and I mean, I couldn't be more excited to you know, step into a team that I think, I think we're in first place now. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, um, but yeah, that's what you want to do. You play this game to win the opponent and you know hopefully win the World Series and um, I'm here to do everything I can to help the Cubs do that. How much will Joe Manning be able to help you with this game? Yeah, I mean it's a big game and it's 
Oh, I think he'll be great. Um, he has a proven track record of that, and he's just a down-to-earth guy. And you, you know, I'm not. I don't feel like I need to walk on eggshells around him or any of the players in here. And you know, as a young guy, that's a pretty special feeling. So, um, you know, getting to talk to Joe um, throughout the spring and you know the meeting today, um, he's a, a manager that I think everybody should want to play for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.